Well, I can't think of a better way to spend a nice snowy Sunday than doing a little grout repair and uh, one of your favorite customers' shower stalls. Beautiful, huh? Video on a super grout additive tub to wall repair where you can see I've already cleaned out all the uh, the grout that was I guess you could say improperly installed in this too thin a joint on this 35 year old install so I'm gonna use up some old products here but this is what the, the kit looks like when you order these off a of TV comes with enough uh, material to do about two or three of these depending on the width of the joint so let me mix up the product and I'll show you how. Alrighty, so I mixed up a, a normal batch which includes two ounces of part A, one ounce part B, and they recommend six ounces of grout, but on a thinner install like this where I'm shoving sanded grout in a gap that could almost take unsanded, I only put five ounces in there. So now I'm going to transfer the SGA into this giant hypodermic, which allows me to force it into the gap a lot better than just putting it in my finger. And just give me a sec and I'll show you. All right, got it all filled up. Notice I left the cap on, otherwise it'll start oozing out, especially when you, once you put in the, uh, the plunger. And if you do a lot of these projects, you probably want to pick up some extra one of these because they only give you one in the kit and you can do three or four tubs out of the uh, standard kit. So with this epoxy fortified grout, you don't need to work nearly as quick as with a, a silicone product that starts to skin over in a matter of minutes. This stuff here gives you, uh, depending on humidity and heat levels and whatnot, but generally gives you about a, a close to an hour's working time. So I'll, I'll come to do this in four segments. Apply it in this wall, half of this wall, and then clean it up. And you'll see how thin it is the second I pull this cap off. She starts running. So you can back this off or let the pressure drop. And bring her over here. And just like silicone you want to move it at a slow pace so that it's you know it's getting in there applying a little bit of pressure that plunger and I'm gonna uh, work it in really well with my fingers too making sure that it's getting in there the as far as it can which isn't all that far in this install um, these things are supposed to have a quarter inch gap, according to code. The code in California, anyways, this is borderline Nevada here, but any place you have earthquakes or house settling uh, potential, you need to have a, a flexible material in here. Too late to do that on this home, so we're going to put in the, the least flexible product possible. But this is a, this is a, you know, I suspect it's an iron tub with a porcelain coating that's really sturdy, old school. And there's, there's no flexing going on. This grout just failed because it's so thin and probably an earthquake or two or the initial settling. That was 35 years ago. And luckily we don't need to do much up the wall there. So I'll put that cap back on. Sure that's on there. Give you a closer look. So you can tell it's on the thin side. When you do a wall, you want to wait to at least the product's at least 30, 40 minutes old so that it's more likely to stay in there. So I'll have a kind of a donor rag that I'll wipe my finger on as I clean it off, maybe a couple inches. And one of the nice things about this product, and the reason we're doing this, is because you can color match. Unlike silicones, they're only available in a few colors. You've got 
white and almond and maybe two shades of gray and GE and then black and brown and horrible clear. You're stuck with those colors, which in this install look like heck. Uh, they have white in here covering chunks of old and remaining grout. And it did not look good. They're going to put new fixtures in, remove these antique ones. So, you want to get a little nicer look than that white silicone. So now you take your, your pre dampened microfiber, put your finger in there, and just do as many cleanup passes as needed, getting it off the wall and off the, off the tub and leaving it just in the joint. And unlike silicone, you can make lots of swipes with this product until you get the desired uh, look that you're after. With no, uh, no scalloping, stop marks, or whatever. And it's just it's a fantastic product to work with. It just, I don't know, it's got a brain. It knows where to stay. So, that looks pretty damn awesome. I'm going to give you a closer look. But that's really all there is to it. All right, all done. Uh, keep in mind, uh, you don't see it so much with this color, but... Part A is white, so when you mix it up on uh, darker colors, it's going to look too light, but as it dries, that effect goes away. And now we got a pretty much a, a permanent fix to the crack and grout, mold, and mildew, and other things that go wrong on these tub to tile joints. And with all my babbling, it took me about an hour to do that, so charge accordingly. And this is a great tool to have in your arsenal. Not the perfect fix for flexible situations that are going to continue to flex where you want to use a silicone based product, but for something rigid, this is the end all to fix all. <laughs>